Snoop Dogg has come full circle and he's going to be releasing an album soon. And I think it's on, I think it's called like Back on Death Row or something like that. But <laughs> one thing that makes it great is that he is acquiring Death Row Records, his original record label. Hi, Blurry Sean. And um, apparently what? he is, go- we'll figure that out later. But um, he, because he debuted on Doggy Style on... Uh, 1993 in 1993 but since then of course he's had a bunch of different record releases a whole different spanning career more or less and he's gone to do a whole like variety of different things in his career but nevertheless he believes that yeah back on death row which will be releasing um apparently already released actually just this past sunday but um Oh, there you are again. Uh, when Snoop Dogg left Death Row in 1998, he explained, there was nothing over there. Suge Knight was in jail. Tupac was dead. Dr. Dre left. It's it's telling me that either I'm going to be dead or in jail or I'm going to be nothing. So that's a lot of why Snoop Dogg left. But yeah, like we said, Snoop Dogg's entire uh, trajectory of his career has changed. Uh, he now does um, fake weed ads with Bic lighters and Martha Stewart. <laughs> what a time yep. to be alive. And so, you know, I think this is a nice, interesting full circle thing for him. Yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's just the the irony of it all, right? Of all the stuff that happened between him and Death Row Records. I mean, all the stuff with the gangster rap in the 90s, you had Easy e saying, you know, motherfuck, motherfuck Death Row, here comes my left blow. Um, you have this so much history within there that it's kind of cool to see you go for a circle. It'll be interesting to see what happens and to see what he does with Death Row, right? Like you have... You have a lot of interesting um, rap record labels right now that are kind of in this limbo situation of artists leaving them, artists coming and trying to see how they adapt to an ever-changing world, adapt to newer artists coming on to their re- record labels and stuff. So um, but we'll see what happens. We'll see if it's a good thing for them or something where it's just it's a Hail Mary to see what happens. Um, and yeah, you report, you decide. Yeah. Yeah. Um... If, while this is all happening, there was a lawsuit by a Jane Doe, essentially, that alleges mm-hmm. in 2013 that the rapper, along with Snoop's longtime associate, um, Bishop Magic Wan, um, basically sexually coerced, harassed, and assaulted this woman after attending a Snoop concert in Anaheim, California in 2013, basically saying that the associate offered to take her home, um, assaulted her there, and then brought her to a place where Snoop Dogg was shooting for a potential career opportunity and then alleging that Snoop Dogg then sexually assaulted her there in a bathroom. Um, it's kind of in one of those situations where like the lawsuit exists and Snoop Dogg is responding saying that um, this is um, basically just a gold, basically that she's a gold digger more or less mm-hmm. um, saying that it's gold digger season is here to be careful and keep your circle small. So it's, it's a weird situation because a lot of times it's a lot easier to kind of say there's a history or a pattern um, of a record with this person, like with the Marilyn Manson stuff that's ongoing, for example. Yeah, yeah that, that's... Yeah. yeah. Or the R. Kelly Brutal. stuff. There's a pattern, there's a history, there's a record. Not you've a little gotten, bit R. Kelly. Yeah. You've gotten some stuff with Snoop Dogg here and there. I mean, he's a well-known crip and like uh, there's a <laughs> lot of like things here and there related to that. Um, but... it. You know, like sexual assault isn't one of those things you've seen a lot, so to speak. So, nevertheless, you just like see where the case sort of goes through, yeah. and we'll see the rises from there. Because right now, it's sort of like a he said, she said yeah. kind of thing. 